you're going to talk about UK hip hop, any of the magazines, any of the radio shows, and you ain't mentioned us. Yeah. Then, then you're not doing your we, education. We obviously had some altercation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. You, you obviously was the editor of a magazine, <laughs> and we threw you down the stairs. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller podcast, live and direct. Central London, essential as you need to be. Good evening, good morning. <laughs> Serves you right for tuning in. <laughs> we have a special guest in the house. First of all, shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, Kellervision app, free download, most definite effect for your 24 7 street culture music business. And to join that catalogue of fucking awesome is an old friend of mine that goes back a long time. Farmer G Task Force. Going on, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. I'm on the Killer Killer podcast. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, Jesus Christ. So, 230 episodes, and the thing that you was, you were plus the 230 is and un, it's, that's unfounded in my mind 200 is that how many episodes you've yeah. done what the, that's, well, just, that's almost you... how old I am <laughs> that's how old I feel <laughs> but for real like I can't believe it's 230 and, and you finally show up <laughs> well you know I miss my fault fucking hell huh? it's been a long time innit yeah it has been a long time I remember the first time I was thinking about the first time I met you yeah. and you was a little a little guy yeah yeah well a little big guy I think I more puppy fat than the average seal. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't. No, I can't remember. I, I remember meeting you, but I can't remember where it was. It was in a gig, and it was the first leg of the new Mike Order tour. And Brighton, I think. Was it Brighton? It was either Brighton or Reading. Where did you come from? Brighton, but people thought I was from Reading. Right. It was one of the two. Mm. What was your crew called? I'm doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> 360 physicals. 360 physicals. Was Mont's. Uh, Mon no. oh, oh yeah, that's right. Hold tight. Um, Craig, yeah, um, Monts. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, Luke, yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, I did some actual like kids work with one of your guys like much later, Fuck. years later. Hey, it might have been months. I can't remember. Mm, mm. Mm, anyway. I mean, we're going back. When are we going back? We're going back. Fuck, quite. 1999, maybe 98. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, twenty odd years. Twenty odd years. Yeah. How does it feel when I say that? Um, for me, time's a bit of a funny one because um, I relate all time to the birth of my first guy, my mm -hmm. first son. Mm -hmm. So when I think of time, I always think, how old is he? And then I think how old he is. And then I'll kind of, because I'm not very, my memory's not very good. Mm -hmm. So I forget stuff quickly. So I have to think, all right, how old is he? That means he was that old. Uh, uh, yeah, it's quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like... quite a long time. So my guy would have been about eight years old when, when we, we first did all that. Man, you were a pops early, weren't it? Yeah. I, uh, uh, I won't say regretfully. Yeah. But um, yeah, young parents, they, they, know, they know the struggle, especially when you're like, living in between homes and whatnot and you're not necessarily on great terms with the mum of the child but um yeah man we we survive and we keep going and, and we, we we look after our kids yeah yeah more power to the parents the single mm -hmm. parents um man where to begin with this for those of you who don't know about farmer g part of the dynamics which makes up the original uk hip-hop formation task force mark b rest in peace chester p mm -hmm. um i mean we'll get into other you know integrations but and stuff but you know mr thing was also part of the yeah yeah for sure formation mm. um and uh, you know a, a trailblazing crew that brought uk hip-hop to the attention on such a level it opened the doors for the likes of me, the likes of Jest, the like. Do you know what I'm saying? It's argu it's, argu it's, ar it's debatable. I was going to say arguable. I don't know if that's a word. Debate. <laughs> it's debatable. You got go on YouTube, have a look at some of the comments on YouTube, and there's a big debate about <laughs> uh, who influenced who. Did Chester P give birth to Jest, or <laughs> is Jest the illegitimate son of <laughs> yeah, whoever? Yeah, uh, yeah. We, it's a debatable thing, and it's all fun at the end of the day. But mm. yeah, yeah. Go on, yeah. Carry on. Yeah, go carry on. on. I was enjoying that. I was yeah, enjoying yeah. that. Uh, and just generally, you know, I feel like you as, an, and this is one of the key reasons why I'm, I was really keen to 
have you on, not only because we've got so much to share, but mm. because the the dynamics of you as an artist, as a as an MC, you're very versatile. When I think of Chester P, who, who was a who and still is a battle rapper, he's very pro um, community, very socially minded. Um, uh, as as are you, like your bro, but you you're it's like uh, it's like fire and water. Yeah. And you're the water side. And that can often get uh, overlooked because water's a pretty, like, chilled it's stuff. It's fluid stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, very well um, observed. <laughs> Nicely put Plenty as well. Plenty of tour bands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you know what I was thinking on the way here? I say I've got a lot in my mind, but not a lot to say. Mm. And um, I think that is... That's sometimes that's an age thing. Some would say wisdom or whatever. I don't know about that, but age, sometimes it's better not to say too much mm. because then there's much more f for people to judge you on. Uh, the act of kind of uh, what, guessing. Isn't it? Um, well, I mean, Chester, as you pointed out, he's extra prolific mm. in whatever he does. He's, he's outspoken. He's well-spoken. He's well-read. He has... Uh, he has a very defined opinion of himself and everything around him and um, it is known. Mm. Um, and I don't think I take myself that seriously to the extent where I think people actually need to know anyway. But verse-wise, as an MC, um, my foundation in MCing was just braggadocious mm. raps. The stuff like, we grew up on, the battle stuff. Yeah, like if I, I imagined I had a fat rope chain mm -hmm. with a, a four-finger ring and a kango when I was young. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I think Chester probably imagined that he was locked in a prison cell with junkies and... and <laughs> what a great analogy. <laughs> but but that was... that If <laughs> if I... I've said it a, a few times now, so I probably have to like actually put it out so people can listen, but... I have recordings of myself from maybe aged 11, 12, and Chester's two years younger than me, so he would have been 9, 10. Mm. And the proof is in that pudding right there because my raps are um, MC Just Juice, Time to Bust Loose. You're saying it's about time for I am the ruler, and you know it. Like, Basically, that kind of stuff. And Chester was like, I'm in the cell, people locked in hell. And, and that, that's, that's for, for real. That's the lyrics that you'll find on them cassettes is, is pretty much that. So, I mean, it was never a new thing and it's not really, a, it's, it's more of the, of the personality and the DNA of Chester P and Farmer. Um, I'm much more... Um, Nonchalant, maybe, maybe is a word that someone with a lot of, you know, thought, a thoughtful way of saying it would be to say I'm rather nonchalant. But probably if I was to say it, I'd say I just don't actually give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, probably, you know. So um, now I mean, you fucking know. No, but that is kind of it for me, really. It's like um, a lot of my raps don't make sense. Like you can listen to them. They're much more stylistic, so it's not... I mean, I can do struggle rap. That's what they call it now, apparently. Struggle, yes. struggle rap. Struggle rap. I can do that, and we have been doing Hashtag it for years. Yeah. As you know, like Junkyard and all that kind of stuff, that's yeah. what you would consider to be struggle rap, I feel, mm. or conscious or social observation or whatever you want to call yeah. it. But um, I've always thought you can only do one thing so many times before then it's like okay let's, creatively shall we kind of move on a little bit or is that I mean there's only so much you can say mm. if you're going to write a book about conspiracies then your next book is about conspiracy and your next book is about conspiracy and it's, just, it's kind of like alright yeah but you said that in the first book kind yeah, of yeah. because like if people people who elaborate a lot on something there you go that's that's been said before so it's like what Chester could write a whole 32 bars about, I, I might just write a bar. Mm, mm. So it's the elaboration. And yeah. Chess is really good at elaborating and creative wordplay. And With I'm depth. not, maybe I'm just not as clever. 
I'm I'm blunt. Right. No, I so uh, can I just interject right here, just on that on that one word. Um, you create a uh, a mist. There you go, a mist of creative <laughs> content, vocally, verbally. Like it's almost like you're fucking poetic as fuck. And when um, uh, you know, I don't think the first Task Force album did did it any justice. The second one, however. Your voice and, like you say, your nonchalance, I think, brought that even further to the table on the second album. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a poetical stance. You had a lot more, I don't know, it felt like less words, more said. Do you know what I'm saying? I think it's acting, first first and foremost. I think rapping, being an MC is, is an act. It's part of, and you have to, I had a lot of trouble um, determining in my mind when we kind of, started peaking in our in our fortune i was going to say fame but no in our fame not our fortune mm-hmm. when we started peaking in our in our notor- notoriety mm-hmm. especially in london my head kind of started going and it was throbbing big and um it was very difficult for me to get a, a hold on my ego mm. and um it caused me a lot of mental stress because of uh it was almost like being schizophrenic. And because I smoked so much uh, high-grade weed, mm. my mind was getting very confused mm. as to who I was and what my job was. And my job was entertaining lots of people who admired me and my brother and the work we did. And that gets very confusing to a child who has maybe not received enough empathy and enough compassion and love and nurturing as a child. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So it's like, hold on, what's going on? What, what are all these? It's confusing. What, what do you, is it me? And it, you just get a little bit confused. And well, like got, an imposter syndrome sort of. Um, no, the ego. The ego plays. Because you... I mean, you have to have it in you in the first place, but then you, you can become manipulative mm. with, with your power. Because it's almost like a, I went to therapy and the therapist said, so what's the deal? And I was like, well, like as Robin, I'm really shy and anxious socially and want to fit in. Mm. But then as farmer, it's like flamboyant farmer who like who would just look, hey how are you doing and yeah. it's like the the fonz is in in the room right <laughs> and at one point it was it was full on in mm. in that style but and and she said so what's the problem i said well when i'm walking down the street like i feel like hindered by my own anxiety etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's like i can't look people in the eye i can't go to like an interview because I can't deal with someone being on the other side of the desk who's who's got power mm. and authority and like I had a whole thing going on for a lot of my life. Have it. I mean, it's a, it's a first world issue, but for me it was like it was terrifying because I couldn't manoeuvre properly as a human being that had to do simple things. Mm. But then I could get on a stage with thousands of people and be like, hey, this is, this is yeah. great. Like, so it was very confusing. And she said, well, why don't you... It was a bad, bad bit of advice, really, because she said, well, why don't you go into those situations as farmer? And I was like, okay. So I just started living as that. Anyway. Yeah, then you all of a sudden you embody the whole thing, 360, and you, your whole personality... <laughs> I was engulfed yeah. by by this monster, and um, yeah, we. I mean, it, it caused a lot of problems. We 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 even got to the point where we turned we turned on our fans, and our fans in turn turned on us. And like there was actual times when huge fights broke out, and it was it was due to the behaviour of the ego, man a man. <laughs> and um, you know, now looking back, it's like what a. F- freak of nature to uh, be so ugh, yuck do you yeah. know what I mean but yeah back to I mean lyrically MC to me is ego it is act so it's like it's putting that into perspective and knowing when to get it out of the box and it's like here's my little monster mm-hmm. and it's like that that was what I tried to display is this 
lyrical kind of jumping around kind of little creature. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I know live. I know exactly what you mean. You do. You get into a, you get into like this level. Well, I mean, this this kind of movement of like shadow, almost like shadowing the mic. But it's and, a car. Yeah, I mean, I like being the hype man. Yeah. I, I always noticed that I knew Chester's lyrics and Chester didn't know mine. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> but it's like I, because I tell you what, we watched. Um, Leaders of the New School perform on MTV, mm. Yo MTV Raps. That was cold, yeah. There's one particular one they did. And the way that they performed, like me and Chess kind of consciously said to each other, that's how you perform. And that was before our whole journey, really. And we kind of always built our set as a theatrical stage show. So, I mean, we didn't practice. Mm. But when you know music and you know, I mean, even if you're just a movie buff, you know where the crescendos and, and the drops and the, the calms and the peaks, oh, yeah. you should know. Yeah. And when, you, when you master that, that's when people start saying they're wicked live because that's where you take your audience, whether your audience is pissed out of their mm. nut or on ketamine or whatever yeah. they're on. You're taking, you're, you're not even taking them, you're dragging them and going, yeah, look, come on, way, way, way up and down. <laughs> and if you, yeah. even it, like I say, even if it is an act yeah. and you're just, you, you know, you've been all over the world, you, you get off the plane, you're sitting there thinking, it's the last thing I actually want to do. Yeah, yeah, that's the word, that's the, that's the job. But then you run on and you go, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. waka, waka, yeah, waka. Yeah, yeah. And, and you bring the storm, innit? it? Yeah. Mm. Couple of vodkas afterwards, and you're away. With, you're out to lunch, and you're all good again. Yeah, you're all yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. I did see like a crazy, and also I, I must add as well in this very subject, I saw a trajectory of you guys, as we said, 1999. First, I first bumped into you guys on the first date of your um, tour with. Uh, uh, Jazz Fudge Records, which was it was now defunct, but was a seminal hip hop mm -hmm. label, independent label, and uh, from that point, then I I got on the tour, and then we must have done ugh, at least two tours plus, yeah. all across Europe and the UK, yeah. and um, I saw this change in dynamic. It was almost like I got off that last date of the tour, mm -hmm. went back to work as we all did, got back in the studio, did our own things, and then I I wanted to see your um, headline show of the launch of your of your new second album, and I went down there, and I just saw a very different energy. What are we talk what, 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 um, what are we talking about? Um, Voice of the Great Outdoors? Are yeah, we talking about? Voice of the Great Outdoors, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, getting in that room in the Scala and and seeing you perform the that album, I, two things I took away. First of all, your performing level had just jumped mm. by a fuck I don't even know what you had in your cereal but there was a whole different you guys performing is whole different but more importantly than that which is something a lot of new artists can take away is you know time is a real fucking uh, it's a luxury and you have to be patient mm -hmm. because uh, I saw you perform your songs I loved them so much mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you started playing the old ones as well and all of a sudden, it was like a big piece of a puzzle clicked in my head. 2002, I think it was. And I was like, yo, they've got catalog. Mm -hmm. I need catalog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the game changed for me. I was like, yo, time is a thing. Yeah, definitely. A, but, but you guys had definitely triggered something in my head that you had a double the audience, you had double the show, you had double the music. It was just a, it was an evolution. Yeah, I mean, me and, me and Chester have been rapping since... Nine, ten, mm. eleven, mm. since nineteen eighty-five. Mm. So there has to be a wealth. If there's not, then we weren't in it. Mm. And a lot of what you see today is people talk about work and the workload, mm. and it's like it's a little bit tiring sometimes. But it's like, yeah, I've made. 300 beats today and mm. it's like wow that's amazing can i hear one of them and it's like they don't, they don't put out yeah let's not hear it um but if you're how me and chester were and i think a lot of musicians strive 
artists alike, not even just musicians, but we strive to have time, like what you just said. Time is what gives an artist the luxury of creation. It's like without the time, that's why we don't have jobs. Yeah, yeah. That's why we haven't ever been employed outside of our area of skill. And um, that's sometimes a really big issue because you're not always successful. As we, as we know as artists, sometimes you're in it and sometimes you're out. And the times when you're out, you've got to put your head down Figure and, it out, yeah. Figure out what the next move is and graft and uh, wait for the next in mm. moment. And um, me and Chester have been pushing, pushing, pushing since early. Since before. You said date, like 12. You said 12 was the first well, times you were. We were constantly writing from that age. Like I've, I've still got the bags full of paper from early that extend outwards into when people know, you know, the verses, basically. But um, through all the different names as well. Um, what were you named before? I think uh, I, I think my first name, like, going back to 1985, was, like, something like MC Just Juice. Just Juice, hold tight. It sounds like a 1985 name yeah, as well, don't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 I would have fucking so, definitely rocked the I was probably change. sitting there thinking, I wonder what I should call myself. Let me go and get a drink. <laughs> just juice straight down a four star general get yourself a fake uh, rope chain Basically. <laughs> they weren't even near them times that's the thing so um, it was all it was all top of the pops and, and whatever mm -hmm. you, there was nothing nothing there nothing there I there get was you. nothing there was no apart from what was going on in places like Covent Garden and like so the, so the bigger boys in my estate um, fella called Leo George the Greek like Felix and Keith and all these guys, they were doing their BMX and they were doing their break dancing. And that side of it was like, oh, something's going on. Uh -huh. E.T. But all these movies made a massive difference over here. Because we Goonies didn't, and shit. Yeah, because we didn't get any of... Wait, what's all this BMXing business? We wouldn't have got BMXs. True. We were watching the movies it's thinking, like yeah, oh, look at that. BMX bandits. Yeah. We were like, whoa, I want a bike like that. Forget that bike that my mum and dad made. I want that bike. <laughs> yeah. and, um, so true. We were so, Americanized from the jump, man. <laughs> it's all about, so, I mean, timeline-wise, it's like uh, writing from early and not stopping and kept on creating. And then every, every move has to be a, a jump. Like once you start working out what you're doing, so then we met this group of guys in tents, Mike Skiller was the brother of the lady who I had my first kid, Remus, with. Mm -hmm. That was like, oh, we went to school together and it all started coming together. He was in a crew called Dominant Force, an old UK yeah, uh, hip-hop crew. Um, but then you have to start joining the dots. Met Skinny Man, met Mongo on different things. All came together. They were mud. Chester joined mud. We were Berry Crew, Berry Crew, Finsbury Park, High Berry, uh, Cannon Berry. So yeah. those areas joined up Berry Crew. We weren't from Berry. We were the Berry Crew. Then we were called Highbury Hoodlums. Then we put on a night alongside Skinny Man, who's Mud Family, and called it Mudlums, yeah. Hoodlums, and Mud Mudlums. That's where it comes from, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mudlums became our night. Then we jumped from one place to another, one venue. We started off in Powerhouse, which was a, like a crack den in Finsby Park. Respect to anyone who reached. I know all the writers, all them old school lot, Jody, all, all you lot. That was the start. Then the word spread all around North London. This is some legacy shit right, right? here, man. Yeah, spread out. Then we moved to WKD, done some over there. Then we did some Dingwalls. Then we did Jazz Cafe, mm. right? And what we did is because we were bandits, we went and burst into a couple of offices of different magazines, unwelcome, not invited. And we had uh, the Touch editor, I think, the Touch magazine, remember that magazine? Yeah, of course, is it yeah. still going? Yeah, I don't think so. So I think it was the editor of Touch magazine, but one of our crew kind of mafioso the, the, the guy into doing all our ads for free and sponsoring us 
<laughs> Fucking but, go. Yeah. But, but that's the way we moved, right? right. Yeah. So it was like, it was all or nothing. Mm. Yeah, you literally hijacked things. A lot of the other guys, the other MCs and the other people, Respect John Z D, Apricot Jam. Oh, yeah. They hated us. With a passion. Because you would go in hard and not. We'd go in hard, twice. we wouldn't pay, we'd burst the back doors. If you were coming into North. This is fucking true, right? by the way. If you were coming into North and putting on a gig, we'd be in there and you know we didn't pay. And you know full well they were in there, they would create. We'd be getting on havoc. the mic, we'd be getting in trouble, and we did get in trouble and it got serious. In some parts of the journey, people got injured and wounded and from our side. And uh, that's when you kind of wake up and you, 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 you start saying, oh, it's actually quite serious because what, what you don't realise when you're younger is that it's people's livelihood. Mm. And we, we weren't thinking like that. So I know I personally have made amends with all them good fellows who are, who are now amazing people in the industry. Mm. Like I said, John Z, DJ Business, DJ Pogo, 279, all, mm. all the people, even, even Tim Westwood, people, all them people we've crossed our paths and uh, we've had indifferences, yeah. Um, I, and stickers as well. You guys had, I mean, I the swear... sticker team, yeah. I swear to God, like, there's probably stickers still up now. <laughs> you guys had, you guys bombed it. Listen, they removed a bus stop. Um, I'm, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it would have been a load of our team when we were doing... Uh, we were doing... Um, Stickering for some, some EP, I think it was a 12 inch or something. We were doing no, but we were doing it for companies because because we were yeah. so prolific. The don't panic kind of team, street team thing. No, it was a big record label, really. Yeah, so we started hitting like on a, on a much bigger scale. There was other teams as well, uh, at that time. Crazy Ballheads, I, I remember, mm. who uh, I met still know some of them now. Um, but some of our lot had uh done a bus stop and literally wallpapered the bus stop. <laughs> I think I from, remember this And, and they removed the actual <laughs> physical structure of it. Not the little pole, the <laughs> bus stop. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but that, that was all fun. But that's, that's the learning. When you're learning, you jump, you, you, you create something, you look around and then you, you leap and you jump to the next thing. You jump. You, sometimes you have to jump sideways, but you, as long as you're jumping and you're moving in a direction, you create longevity because you look back and you see all these different things and you can mm. say affiliated, affiliated, affiliated. You can't talk about Kung Fu. Tree. You can't talk Kung Fu without talking Task Force. No, at all. But it wasn't a Task Force night. No. But you can't mention Kung Fu without yeah, yeah. our name. Without question. And similar to, like, if you're going to talk about UK hip-hop, any of the magazines, any of the radio shows, and you ain't mentioned us... Yeah. Then, then you're not doing your we, education. We obviously had some altercation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. We, you obviously was the editor of a magazine <laughs> and we threw you down the stairs. Notoriety is also key. You can't, you can't be friends with everyone all the time. It doesn't work. No, but it's, I mean... At, not all the time. At this age, at my age now, mm. I strive to, if I can't be friends or, you know then at least we're civil. Mm. There's no, absolute no reason for me to disagree with someone... To the point of... To the point of being, like, mm. kicking off. What happened to Barry Crew? Like, and I'd, I'd say that broadly, but more specifically, what happened to... Int Intense was, a, was one hell of a character in the crew. MC well, more of a hype man. So his name is the person. His name, Intense. But before he was Intense, he was, he was Intense Whisper which I always like. I like that a lot because that's, that's great. It's in very my, suggestive. In my ear, that's like, mm, yeah, I like that. Um, he was also, before that, he was Violent V. Whoa, shit. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but um, Intense, he was, he was my best pal. When I met Intense in the first year of secondary school. I went to secondary school, Highby Grove Boys School at the time. Hard as nails school. Um, like if you're coming up the hard way, mm. that was that was Highby Grove. Wow, because uh, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. Give me some examples. Well, Highbury is an odd area. Highbury, Canterbury, Islington. It's an odd area because you're surrounded by 
notoriously racist areas, um, at least historically. Mm. So you had the Marquess estate, mm -hmm. right, which is a huge, sprawling estate, new modern build estate, um, which was just full of racist families, old school racists. Okay. And then Elf you had, it. then on the other side of Essex Road, you had Packerton Estate, another racist, white racist estate, and you had Barnsbury, again, another quite racist white estate, uh, white area, mm. right? And then on the other side of us, you had Newton Green and you had Stoke Newton, which is predominantly, historically, before they turned it into a village, was a, a black Caribbean area, Hackney, going off into Hackney. So you, yeah. we were like a, like a, a safe haven. So you had a lot of people who came to chill mm -hmm. and that's where the melting pot, and maybe that's why it's such a musical place because people came there and it just, the vibe went down. But our school was that. Our school was divided into the kids who obviously came from the white areas and the kids that came from the black areas and there was that divide it was and you could feel it oh you not only feel it but it was it was ever present we, we had you had the black hill you had the black slope <laughs> yeah you had the black army and then you had all the white nittos and and whatnot wow and it would kick off it was it was it was like that what year, what year was this thing so we're talking what eight six eight seven that time? um yeah i suppose yeah it was the, so you were late, young. the second half of the 80s yeah um, but anyone who went to school knows knows that's pretty much what it was anyway. But what was particularly interesting about my school is that it was in the middle. Like if you went to Islet and Green, that was a lot of that's right near the white mm -hmm. estates. Mm. So it was much more, at least less mixed. Our school it was just mixed. Yeah. So it was kicking off left, right, and centre. But at the same time, there was good mix going down because it was like you had all sorts of elements going on. But so where does all this music... like? So we had Wookiee going yeah. to our school. But cool FM was around those areas as well, wasn't it? The Pirate Station. Was cool I mean, FM around a lot of the A lot of the stuff that was going on. North, North had a lot of music going on. But drum bass. Yeah, like I say, the Chews. Mm. So Leon Chu, he just passed away. Oh. He was in my brother's year. Um, you had Wookie, you got DJ Spoonie. Yeah. Like, you got, you got a whole heap of these different people who came from our school. Um, That's fucking awesome. And so I got into school and I was a rapper. And then I met this guy in tents and it was like, he was a rapper, but he was freestyling. And he was like, he had... Jamaican twang and like all these different reggae vibes going on. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to rap in front of this guy. So it was like, I became a beatboxer. So I was the beatbox man, <laughs> right? For, for, for Intense. I remember this now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> Vincent's doing the rapping. And we would go up and down um, Highbury Fields and busk. So we, we were like, Walking along, businessman going to work or coming back from work. <coughs> Intent to be, I watch you what I do, I watch you what I do, I watch you what I do when the AIDS lick you. <laughs> like 13 year olds just bopping up, riding rhythms, <laughs> like going up and down. It's like, cool, come back, come back, mm. getting a little 10 pence, 20 pence, 30 pence. And um, that's how we started. And then, and then we started getting into battles with uh, Mike Skilligan, who was the slickest hip hop guy in our school. Um, he had like he had the Jerry Curl perm. It was all slick and that, and um, it it was just a beautiful time. Like if you listen, there's a record by a Dominant Force called Raptivity, and if you listen to, I think it's the second verse. He breaks down that time where he almost got took by a super dope brother who was known as number one. Like, and he talks about all the kids crowding around and people climbing on the fence to have a look. Every break time, hundreds of kids. Me, Intense, versus Mike Skiller and uh, his beatbox people. And it was just wild. Mad. It was wild. Own little kind of scene. <laughs> mm. So what happened to Intense in the end? Is he, is he still around? Um... You know what? I don't see them. I don't see them. But when I do see Intense, uh, 
Sparks, and any of the guys from from back in the day, it's just love. Yeah. And it, it's it's a, it's a thing for me because I don't I don't hold uh, I don't I'm not sentimental to the extent I don't have friends like I don't carry I'm I'm with the people I'm with at the time so I don't carry from any particular time and it's like every, anyone who's at a time you're in that time I've moved yeah 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 I don't know why that is it's put something to do deep deep inside of me I don't know what that is but. Um, intense as far as I know the last time I knew he was like uh, he started doing that excuse me can you join the cha that charity business which was right up his street because like he's a hustler mm -hmm. but then he became the manager of the guys you'll see on the street Three. so he'd be there watching them watching them taking notes that's fantastic. <clears throat> but Fuck. as far as I know, he's successful. That's wicked. And, and he's well. And, and that, that's all I could wish for Intense. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Intense, anyone who crossed paths with Intense back in the day. Oh, God. You know, bro. And I've got a lot of time for the guy. Long, He really did. Yeah, he showed me some love from the jump. Yeah, I think I played Mudlums. Uh, Dingwall's era of Mudlums changed my whole fucking life, bro. You guys booked me and I was just like, Yo, I just, I didn't even have a plan, you know, you know, I was like, yo, I'm not getting paid, keep the bar open, I'll just quickly be doing this, you know. Um, and yeah, I got a load of free drinks after it, but what was more cr crazy and still to this day, I can remember it so well, was the mixed audience that was in there. But it was on some eight mile business, either you're fucking good or you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean... There's, there's, for me, there's only one way. It should be you run the gauntlet, man. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of sensitivity going on in the world t t today, which is is all good in in digestible amounts. Mm. But when it saturates every single element of life, sensitivity is fine. And but there has to be there has to be ruthless judgment. Yeah, exactly. There Somewhere, yeah, they do. Or else you're just going to be walking around with eight place trophies, thinking that you, you know. It's good. It's good to boost everyone up. It's good. It's good to say, yeah. That, I mean, you, you find that as a parent, you, you yeah. like, you look at the work and you think, what's this? Mm -hmm. But you can't just go. You know what? That is, uh, it's not good enough, mate. You you have to find something. It's what my wife teaches me. You find something good and then you end on something positive to take away from it that you could improve on. I think all humans need that shit, you know. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we try, we try. But like I say, I, I, my upbringing, my people's upbringing was rough to the extent it's like if you weren't cutting it, then you got told. Mm -hmm. And I don't see nothing wrong with that because then you go away and you think, I'm not as good as I should be or could be, mm. so let me come back. And if someone had said, you know what, it was really good actually, but you know when you did this and you did that, but it's like then, but that didn't reflect with what the crowd were throwing at me, did it? But that works for you. <laughs> well, bottles hitting you oh, yeah. from from the crowd that works. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like I shouldn't be here. That's right. You shouldn't be yeah, here. Yeah, Go yeah. the fuck home yeah, and yeah. practice and come back another time. But it just uh, why should it be? Ex well, not bottles, obviously. But you fruit, know, fruit. Yeah, exactly. Pigs' heads, things like that. <laughs> but why should it be exclusive to sport that that competitive edge remains? Oh, I yeah. No, I don't think. I don't think it. I don't think it. I mean, rap, rap music. It's very hard to find other musics that have the similar, um, and by rap music I will encompass all of the all of it, like yeah, grime yeah. and all the rest of it. Just, and just the elements for the conversation's stuff, sake, yeah. the the hip hop elements, we're uh, we're competitive, and yeah. I think it would be useless without that competitiveness because that is partly the joy of it. Yeah. It's the joy. It is the joy. Yeah, it. it's like if you're. Um, like I enjoy watching Style Wars, the the graph. Mm. I think it it's a must for anyone Seminal. who comes in at any point, whether it was ten years ago. If you haven't seen it, you must see it because it is a very important archive of knowledge and the 
the mind frame of what makes our scene. The foundation, the blueprint. Yeah. And one of my favorite bits is Cap. Mm. The guy is mad. <laughs> and yeah. older than the rest of them, pretty much. The guy is mad. He he's fuck. absolutely mad. He's a racist and he's mad. Yeah. And he's going around just bombing because he feels like it. But what he stands for is a crucial, not, not, the, not the racist no. part, the, the, his idea of urban artistic warfare is what a lot of, at least a lot of where I came from, that's what we strived. We thought that everyone else was our enemy. Yeah. And we had to go out as a, a tribe of angry hoodlums and say, no, we're much better than you at any cost. And uh, wow, obviously, yeah. if you tone it down a bit, then it's pretty much on the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we had it completely wrong because we were like extremists. And n okay. usually, usually extremists in any way are wrong. Mm. So we were wrong a majority of the time. But in our hearts, what we thought we were doing... Was the cap. It, yeah, if you just roll it back a little bit, what we had was the... We had it right. And I have to say at this point, at this juncture, you were an avid graph writer yourself, which always ticks fucking boxes for me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I dabbled. I, I can write. I can write, um, and I still look at tags. Yeah, I still look at tags because it's, um, and that's that again. That will that will give you more insight to me, my my raps, because it's just it's more artistic. It's not necessarily a social commentary or a conscious opening. Mm. of any sort it's just more to do with art and uh a, a guy once said to me and i think he was an engineer in a studio we went to i can't remember who it was with maybe um what's natty what's natty do you know what's yeah, natty? natty speaks is it natty? yeah what's his what was his crew called oh my god no, yeah. It's coming back. yeah um yeah, he lives down right? tunbridge oh. yeah tunbridge yeah, lot, yeah tunbridge lot natty oh. uh True speakers? No. I think it was their crew anyway we, we, we were recording for. It was a nice studio space. True Thoughts? No. No. Nah. Anyway, yeah. And uh, the guy said, the, the, the engineer was an old fella, like an old hippie kind of dude. And he, he, I'd done my verse and I came out of the booth and he was like, he was listening back to it and he was going, man, this reminds me of scat. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, you, you taking a piss? He's trying to say it's shit. And um, he was he was going, no, you're scatting. And I was like, I had to like go away and like find out what he meant. <laughs> Scat. <laughs> Shit. Oh no, it doesn't mean that. Scat. Ah, oh, interesting. So and then it I thought to myself, yeah, actually you're you're pretty on, on the mark with that. Because it isn't so much like I said, a, a lot of them it, it doesn't make sense. I'm a, I'm gonna write some rhymes. And then I'll come back, or someone will say to me years down the line, yeah, I love that line where you go, da 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 And after a bit of thought, and I remember what they're actually talking about, I'll make sense of it. Mm, you reverse engineer yourself. I'll make sense of That's it. That's sick. Because it didn't make sense. But then I'll think, okay, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. There's yeah, a yeah, scat to That it, word. So for me, it's like maybe there was one word five bars ago, and that kind of... Oh, yeah, I'll tie it in somewhere down there. Mm. And maybe, like, Indiana Jones or someone will be able to <laughs> arrange the treasure map and say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. So, or otherwise it just doesn't make sense, it, which it doesn't anyway. So. But a lot, of, um, a lot of that, you know, for example, scat, a lot of that is based on your choice of words. With your voice, like, and I've always also found this very interesting, that... You, you, you have two variations. It's like there's the chilled, and then there's the um, high pitched chipmunk. But it's more anxious. There's more anxiety. Again, to it's it. acting. That's that's the act, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's your your top range flutters, and I you know I know that might be over analysis, but it just feels like there's a panic, and it really works because of all the water 
that lies in your verses, mm -hmm. it's almost like there is a suspense when it all of a sudden it's going, your, your performance, again, you're going for it. But what do they say that a vocalist, if you're, if you're just thinking of yourself as an MC, putting a verse on top of a beat, if that's as far as it goes mm -hmm. for you, then that's, that's fair enough. But to me, because I'm not just an MC, and I'm uh, very, very uh, fucking monster when it comes to listening to sounds. Mm. I'm, not very, I'm not a great engineer because my ears are so bad. So that's not the part of sound I mean. I mean the emotion of sound and what you're feeling off sound. So whenever I've made music or made beats or whatever, if I can't feel what it is that I'm sampling, then there's absolutely no point, which is why I've never really gone for um, the premier chops and things like that, because mm. if it can't bring... I understand the boom bap mm. emotion, what that brings, I get that, but that's why I don't think the UK has ever really embraced me as a producer. Because producer. you are a producer, you're bad. I producer. am a producer. I've had like plenty of beats I mean, for years But ago. the thing is, is I'm not a boom bap producer. And, and if you weren't doing boom bap, and, and this is no disrespect to people who, who produce, because I think like Thing and Mark B and Vadim and like uh, Lewis Parker and Jest and all these guys, they, they make incredible boom bap mm. beats. And that's what a lot of people wanted to hear. But I can't make boom bap beats because I can't feel them the same because I need a loop. Mm. But I don't need a chop, I need a loop because, and I'm not a musician in the traditional sense. That explains a lot in terms right? of the production, yeah. So if you listen to my beats, they're loops. Literally loops, yeah. Not. Not necessarily strictly loops, but they're bigger portions where some people be like, like they're listening to a piece of music. Like if I'm sitting in the same room as another producer and we're listening through to some music, they might say, oh, oh shit, yeah. Did you hear that one stab there? And I'm like, what? And they'll take a, like a quarter of a mm -hmm. bar stab or whatever it is, take it and then just start playing with that. And then put their own bass line on it, and that's and I'm like, shit, I would have, I wouldn't have, I would just miss that. Yeah, yeah. But did did you hear this bit? And I'm playing, and they're like, no, nah, not at all. And it's like, well, let me have that. I'll loop that up. I'll put a little beat under there, or just at least add a bit of strength to the drums that are existing on it. Mm. Oh shit! But that's not the man's style because this is something that's coming through more now in production. Is that people are again saying, I'm going to sample. Mm. I'm going to sample a big, massive-ass piece of someone's music. Yeah. And we stopped doing that for a long while. Yeah. But I never stopped doing that. <laughs> I've always done that. And I'll always keep doing that because why not? Yeah. Because that's, that's the emotion. So it's like for me as a rapper, if you give me some haunting our strings, or if it, like take Solar vs. Luna on... MFTC two or three or whatever it was, mm. or is it one even? It might even be one. But if you take that string section, it's such a powerful string section on its own. To put a, a lovely beat on top of it and then put two MCs splashing beautiful, colorful verses all over it, you can only create something amazing. Yeah, that's you right. can only create something amazing. Yeah. And like I say, I ain't got nothing to do uh, to say bad about Boom Bap because it's uh, marvellous. But at the same time, I don't think I was ever embraced as a producer over here because I don't make... I don't do that. Yeah. That's not... I can do it, but it's not what, it's not what I actually want to do artistically. Yeah, it doesn't get your rocks off, does it? Not really, no. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of them ones. But, I mean, lyrically, it's got to be, whew, like, flowing. Mm. As I was going to say, your vocal 
has got to be more than just putting something on top of a piece of music. Yeah, it's got to be the last and ultimate instrument mm. on that piece of music. It's got to be, not in your case, because <laughs> no, you'll be like, so well, I'm going to layer the first bit and the last <laughs> bit, so it all makes sense. But if you're, yeah, you're right. for instance, how, we, how a lot of us make music now is like, I'll send you the beat, you put your verse on, you send it back to me. That's all good. As long as when I send you that beat, you're listening to it and thinking, how can my voice become the last instrument to go on this piece of music so I can send it back? And when Farms listens to it, it's like, yeah, you played that bit of instrument wicked right there. That's really, that's 101, isn't it? That's the basic premise of, you know, it, it's John Coltrane, you know, it's, it's adding that value that you're putting something over top of it, it better be fucking good. Yeah, but it has to be musically flipping, what do you say, complementary yeah. to the thing you're putting it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Which is you, really, a lot of MCs don't do that, and I don't know why they don't think mate, about how they're delivering. If you're an MC and you can't put, you can't be good on every beat. Mm. You can't because it might not be your beat. It might not be the type of beat that you are as an MC. Your MC voice and technique and style mm -hmm. might not be able to go. So it's cool. I've met hungry ass MCs or no hungry MCs. At every beat you play them, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. And I'm sitting there thinking, you'd never be able to rock that yeah. beat. Not and because you're not. You don't want to give it to them because you'll just be wasted. It'll just be off it goes. You are different. fresh enough. Mm -hmm but not for this beat because this beat belongs to someone who's going to play that instrument differently. Yeah. yeah. Play that voice like some some MCs are harmonically diverse and they can go all around the place yeah. and create tones and and notes and tunes with with their mm. with their vocals. And some are just monotone and then monotone rappers you'll find them on a lot of boom bap beats. Yeah. Or gigs for instance, you know gigs has a, a very monotone voice and he and he just, he cuts through the, the beats he chooses are very interesting. But he has a lot of personality. Yeah, he does as well, yeah. Right, so you've got someone like Giggs, and you could say it sounds monotone, but he's got a hell of a lot of personality. Yeah, tons. And a lot of character yeah. in his voice. And it's like, it might just stay one thing, but he goes up and there's a jeez, and his, yeah. his ad-libs give it, give it personality. So, yeah, but you listen, you listen hard, and you can hear all this stuff, and you have... So I've always got a little bit of a narky voice in my ear going, you don't like it, you don't like it. When I hear m monotone rappers, just like without really going anywhere, mm. at least a little bit up and a little bit of down just to give it personality. Mm. But yeah, I've always got a bit of a thing mm. for, for that. Just staying on the, uh, on the production side of things mm. and moving into like that Task Force era mm -hmm. might be and his production. Now, how was that from the beginning? How did, how did it feel working with Mark? How was it working with an external producer from a very different, you know, cut of cloth? Well, not so much, actually. Maybe just a different walk of life. Um, well, Mark had already worked with uh, The Mud, if I'm right, yeah. Mm. He'd done Mud Files. Is Mud Files his, oh, I yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. So I think he'd done that with uh, them. And um, we were, I don't think we really had a direction at that point in time when we first met Mark was uh, we were doing Mudlums in Powerhouse. So it was early. And um, Mark came maybe to one of them or two of them. And then at the end of one of them, he asked me and my brother to have a chat with him outside. We had a chat. And um, How did he find out about you then? Probably through like, Skinny and uh, maybe, I mean, we, we'd put little things, maybe Disorder, there was a tape with Disorder that we'd, like Disorder used to do these tapes. Mm. I can't remember what they were called now, man, but he used to just like showcase loads of people's was it tracks. Hustlers? Yes. That was it, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, so. What type Disorder? Yeah, well done, Disorder. Um, them times, so from somewhere you must have just heard about us anyway, but. Um, we hadn't actually put out anything ourselves. Maybe we'd been on radio a few times. And um, the the problem with Berry Crew is, like, we were slow. It's a lot of you. Yeah. But even though, even though it wasn't... 
it, it didn't have it didn't have the the organization that it should have it was very difficult because like the we did a berry crew ep had the the blues and uh hired and different other tracks on it which i think were great tracks but we did them so long ago and then when it got, finally got released they were kind of like eh. mm. and um it just took so long for anything to get done who's the singer in berry crew by the way twilight eyes twilight eyes that was my guy twiggy we used to go and get KFC. Listen, my my guy used to live on Supermort and Nutriment, like, and we'd uh, uh, interesting one on uh, in Hackney. We used to um, share a studio, uh, Sounds of Money. Was it Sounds of Money Studio? A guy called Jeremy Toos. I have a Toos on, but I'm, I just used to call him Toos. But I think he was the manager of Roots Maneuver. So this studio held Black Twang. Roots Manoeuvre and their affiliates and Berry Crew, Mud Fam and Wayne Lotek, who I think... Oh, he, yeah. He, yeah. Drum bass. Was it his um, to get into drum bass? No, I know that he was the DJ for Roots Manoeuvre. So when you okay. saw him on Jules Holland and all that, the, the dread, that was Wayne. He was doing the engineering for us. He did a bit of rapping. And um, we spent a lot of time in that studio. And... Uh, at that time, it was a, it was like there was a little bubbling pot, but um, Mark somehow must have heard of us. He said, "Boom, I'd like to do a record with you," and we was like, "What like the crew them?" And it's like, "No, just you and and your brother." And it was like, "Ah, oh, this is gonna this is gonna be uh, when the shit hits the fan," <laughs> and um, as it it, as it did hit the fan quite hard, but. Um, it's one of those life decisions you have to make. And um, so we kind of thought about it. And uh, we were like, all right, all right we'll, we'll go for it. And he was like, cool, what, what we like? What are we going to call ourselves? And um, I had a, I used to just tag anywhere hmm. in, the, in the room, or the space that we called a studio. And um, it was a sitting room. And hmm. I'd written task force just out of years ago before and i was thinking of all the stuff in the sitting room and uh or chess was one of one of us came up with it and was just like task force and mark was like yeah i don't mind that and i was, was like oh well let's all discover that so we said task force pretty much straight away and then uh we went back and forth to where mark lived was it barnes Kingston, wasn't it? Kingston. So, which Barnes? Oh, he Kingston? was Barnes, wasn't he? Ah, uh, right again. Yeah, he's Barnes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so many trips up and up and back and forth. I think we went to Marks once, and then the rest of the times we went to Vads to record it. So up and down on the train. Vad had the studio up yeah, on Vad, the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his mum used to come up and just. Like, Do you know you see? You go, Tisha, Tisha. You say yeah, Tisha. They're all she, used to cut, she used to be like, Russian. yeah, come down and have like have a drink and have tea. And yeah. it's like, yes, Miss Vadim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. She smashed it. Yeah, Big respect Vadim, mom. man. I love Vadim still. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, Vadim, that we introduced him to Yara Bravo and they got married. And I, I know that's not a story anymore, but, you know, I was always proud of that. Yeah, that was like, a moment. Hip-hop yeah. moment of love. Yeah, exactly. Big shout out about him. Boy. Yeah, big he, shout out. He opened doors for so many people, didn't he? Yeah, he's a good fellow as well. Mm, he's he a is. good fellow. I remember, you know what? I've never seen a, a guy get mad. I've never seen Vadim get mad. <laughs> never. Because that's not the kind of man he is. But I do remember we were in the tour bus, and I reckon you must have been there too. And I think, if I'm right or not, but Swollen Members... Task Force, Mr. Thing, Mampenstein, you, um, and, those and the isolationist, isolationist, yeah, and Simon, yeah, yeah, it, the, the label runner. And we were driving, and it was getting a bit tired, tiring, and the van was swerving a bit. I think someone was falling asleep, mm. and someone put toothpaste either in his ear, or Vad was driving, or in his hair. What? Did he? Did he? Did he go wild? Yeah, he hated it. Yeah, <gasps> never saw that. Yeah, I don't know if Vad will remember that, but he was not happy, and everyone was like, "He's angry." Yeah. Yo, Tuva. Oh, he was real, real angry, really? man. But yeah, so the, uh... the story goes, <laughs> Mark was Mark was blessed, 
we we went to the studio. Vad was there. Mark was there. It was pretty straightforward. I mean, one of my biggest uh, regrets about those sessions is that we were so hungry, not actually hungry mm -hmm. physically, but just artistically hungry that we completely overpowered our verses. Like, they're so... It's almost like saying, like, there's food hanging here and the mic's there and you're going... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> like, it sounds so... It's like, so when I hear it, I go... Oh! Like, it's... The, the the white noise and the crackle off my own hunger is is over overwhelming. You probably maybe that's what people love about I don't know what it is, but it's really over the top. That's interesting. Now when you listen to thinking. it, if you listen to it, it's it's not composed. Like I, I don't mean like composed. I mean the composure of the artists yeah. as they are stable minded. Releasing their, reciting their rhymes yeah, yeah. is not of a composed nature. It is hungry and immediate and, yeah. And I, that's what I get off it. And when I hear it, I think, oh, it's too hungry. But um, It's interesting you see that. Oh, that. I hear it. I hear it because I know that's what it was. It, we were so uh, aware of it being our shot to step up. Like I was saying about... You know, we'd moved here, we'd moved there, we'd do the mudlums, we were working on a Berry Crew EP, mm. but here we are, about to be able to work with people like Vadim and do a record for um, Om Records on the Deeper Concentration compilation. Mm. Like, the, fucking tour and do all this stuff. These were things that were like, well, this, this is now within grasp, so let's perform. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I mean by we overperformed it. It was... It was too, I need it. Mm. It was a bit desperate. There you go, that's the word. It always comes in the, in the end. It was slightly desperate. And maybe you can hear that if you listen to it, New My Accorda especially. And then that's, you did mention a change when you heard the voice of the great outdoors, when you listen to the voice of the great outdoors, with a lot of the earnings that we'd accumulated from doing the tours, even though there was no money, you know that yourself, mm, but... Mm. Um, at least a couple of record sales here and there. We purchased our first MPC, which is what we made the beats for Voice of the Great Outdoors on and recorded it in our own sitting room. Mm. And what you can hear, people are, oh, no, I don't like Voice of the Great Outdoors as much as New Mark Order. What you hear is two brothers who are starving to be given an opportunity, being able to go home in the comfort of their surroundings. With their own control. With their own control and say, let's relax. And what you hear is a, a relaxed recording. It's fucking, that's, that's, uh, that's the journey. Like, I can't think of any particular tune on New Mike Order, the first album, where I feel, where I feel, oh, you guys are too ang angsty. But what I do what I do, however, feel is who's the other? Who was the other guy? Eno Redrum. Right, Eno Redrum. He was like he was like the Vin from Naughty by Nature. He kind of like popped in and out. He was like the Send Dog, and I felt like he just wasn't committing. Well, he he was dragged. Okay. For some reason, I don't know why, but um, maybe insecurity on on our behalf. But we were trying, I suppose we we're trying to shield ourselves from judgment by bringing in different elements. Mm. Uh, and Eno was a kid who, the kids around our estate, they came knocking on the door and were like, We've got a kid who raps, we've got a kid who raps. It's like, All right, bring him up, bring him to the door, All right, bust a rap. And he, 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 I can't remember what he rapped. It was yeah. like a naughty by nature lyric even. Yeah. It, was, it was someone else's rap. And we kind of looked at him and was like, yeah, but like that's not your lyric, is it? Have you got your own lyrics? He's like, nah. I was like, all right. So I bring him in and wrote his rhymes for him and trained him how to spit. And what you hear is the result of that. So I ghost wrote the raps for him. That's why you hear me on his ad-libs. Mm. Because he 
was a very unconfident guy who, like I say, we dragged him along. It's like, yeah, yeah, we know Red Worm, yeah, you know, yeah, we could murder one backwards, yeah, yeah <laughs> come on, let, let's do it. Like, in a Red Worm. No, he didn't know what an NPC was, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? On the I Wish thing, he didn't know, he didn't know what he was talking about. So uh, when you hear that, it's good because a lot of people go, yeah, what happened to Eno Redrum? But I'm glad you he- you hear that because he wasn't a will- necessarily a willing participant. Mm-hmm. And he was really shy and really anxious. So even recording it, and that, well, that's not his own voice either. So I I pressurised, in a, in a way, friendly pressure to m- manipulate him to project in a certain way no you fucking do this first <laughs> no, no, no. tj tj that's his name tj he's a lovely lovely guy and he um you still see him um or you know I where think he is? the last time um we played in brixton jam which must have been a few years ago but he lives over the road from there and he came oh, that's and, uh, sick. i couldn't believe it i was like oh my god and he was like yeah and he's exactly the same kid really but um what's he do for a living you know I've got no idea what he does. Because um, his voice is, you know, and I'll say this as well, with the, with the right pressure, which happened, you, his voice, you, it's really mad to think that that third voice, you must have had an ear for it when you first heard, heard him, because for whatever reasons you brought him in, I think I understand why you brought him into the, the foundation. It was because he was a kid. Mm. He was from the estate. He was that real. And like you say, you're trying to, you know, you, you're going to I keep, wanted to bring another instrument yeah. in. Yeah. And I wanted it to... And his voice was so different. Oh, his voice is great. His to... voice his voice was great. His nerves is what you can hear. So he's not comfortable because that would have been the first or f- second time he had really ever spat the rhyme. Did he record down at uh, Kingston as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he'd have come down with us on the train mm. and um, he would have done those lyrics. And I think we did... Wait, Brixton... Which is the, which is the club in the pub? Is that the jam? Yeah, yeah. What's the one right. in the church? Um, the Mass, yeah. 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 <laughs> Brixton Mass, we it's did a, a gig one. in there, and he came, and this would have been on, maybe you would actually yeah, be there. there as yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I remember. He came, he, that's he came the only, shows. first, never performed. He, I thought he did maybe like two shows on the tour and then stopped. I know that he did the Brixton Mass, and afterwards he was like, I don't want to do it. Was he just, too, was it too much for him? Shit in his pants. Which is cool, but if you don't want to do it, and it's not what you're—I mean, we all shit mm. our pants when we when we first started. Yeah, but it's how but you it's, throw the shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, I I got people in the in the crew who literally came on stage and rapped to the wall. That's how they got over there, and it would be like, yo, yo, we're, <laughs> we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> and my guy was like, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm ready, man. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's how. That's how, yeah. If you want it, then you you find a way. And, yeah. and he he found his way that way. But um, you know, he how did, did he, that feel like though when Burry Crew had already been kind of um, sidelined for not sidelined. That sounds really harsh. It it but but you could have got one of those guys. Um, was that political as well? No, you know what? There wasn't politics to it. <clears throat> okay. It's just... Within that crew, you had... When it was originally came came into existence, I was sat with Intense and Mike Skiller. And Mike Skiller, Intense and myself said, let's form an alliance mm. because we'd been enemies. I was having a child with Mike's sister. Mm. Me and Intense used to battle him, and we were mortal enemies. Oh, shit. Yeah? So it was like, some, some wait, hold on. So Mike shit. must have been thinking, what do you mean he's having a kid with my sister? Like, what kind of re- revenge is this yeah. from a battle in a playground? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, my God. So we all sat down. I can remember it in uh, Skiller's mum's living room and was like, right, boom. We're going to work it out. He'd, he'd done his little uh, dominant force thing. So we came up with the Berry crew. And, um, you know, we just, again, we wanted it to be bigger. So we, out of a lack of confidence in ourselves, we started looking for different components to bolster it. Yeah. But they weren't, they weren't stronger components. They were weaker components. So we had Chester, obviously, Chester, me, Intense, Skiller, 
but then it started growing. And as, as skillful as all of that would, would become at the time when it needed to be, it's like it just kind of like weighed it down. And mm. it was a, a flabby bottom project. Mm. Where it was kind of like running and it was going... Bruh, 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 and Whereas it was... Task Force was a lot more structured. It had the foundations of the label with Mark being delegated to one thing, Vadim in assistance and, um, yeah, I guess having an extra... Well, we didn't have to do anything. Yeah. And just... we did. We, there was no negotiation on our behalf with anyone else artistically other than saying, I like that beat, I don't like that beat. Because me and Chester, we we... The, there's no deliberating, there's no conversation. It's like, Chess, you do your bit, cool. Farms, you do your bit, cool. And it's very rare that I would say, you know what, Chess, that bit, mm, da 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 da. We'd just say it as it's in real time. Mm. Yeah, an ad lib there, Chess, double that one. No, 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 that one. Yeah, farms, farms, like you're coming in too early or whatever, but that's it. Not like listening to it for six months and going, yeah, maybe we should change that. Just drop in. Yeah, because it's intu intuitiveness, isn't it? It's Listen, man, it's like if there's one thing that holds shit back for anyone artistically is this bit up yeah. here. So you're saying, but what are people going to think? Mm. This might not be as good as my last one. Um, that shit's wasted on the youth as well. We get to know that real quick. Drop. Do it. Drop it. Yeah. And you know what they say? They do say it. You're as good as your last drop. But that's a good thing. So mm. drop it anyway. Drop it. Oh, that was crap. It's mm. like, cool. All right, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Drop again. Drop again. That's what You're you not, don't need patience for. We're You're not We're going. not famous. No. We're not massive, massive recording artists who've got like million pound budgets. We're like small time artists, man. It's like, be proud, obviously. Keep your integrity. But like, if you've done a project and you've got 10 tracks and you're saying to yourself, this is an album, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether or not I should drop it. I have a fucking do it or don't. Or get the fuck out. Because you, you, you need to just drop it. Because what the hell did you record 10 tracks for and start calling it an album? Mm. What? So that you could go to, to other people, yeah, I've got this album, but I'm not sure if it's good enough. Um, what do you think? It's like, I don't care. Just drop it. Just do it, yeah. Drop it. It doesn't make sense to me. No, because that's what creates that energy. That's what creates the legacy. If you just start and just keep repeating and you fix it and figure it out as you go. Yeah, but also know, know yourself when you're doing it. Mm. It's like, why, if, if I'm doing it, then I've done it. And it's, it's either good or shit. It's like sometimes I sit down and I spend all day fucking with something, a beat or whatever, and then I listen to it the next day and I think, fuck, you know, what yeah, yeah. shit is that? <laughs> yeah. And it goes, that's yeah, it. End of, no discussion. Not like, hey, do you want to have a listen to this and just like tell me whether or not you think it's any good? What do you reckon? Mm -hmm. Change some of it. Yeah. The kick. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And the snare. Right, yeah, yeah. And the snare. Well, but the snare is kicking though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I got it off an old DJ Premier pack, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's snapping, it's snapping, yeah. Bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> just, that, just let it be natural, man. You have to. Uh, but there is a there is a particular... I mean, you know, the Koffler brothers, fucking Gallagher's, you know, we're talking about a brotherly kinship. Mm. Um, that has its huge benefits where that's concerned. There's some sort of, like, I don't know what's inside your fucking DNAs, but it's like sometimes... I've seen you guys do it live as well. It's just, you can just tell your brothers. Kinetic, do they yeah, call it kinetic? Yeah. Can, can, I, can, can I get can myself a mint? Or a do that. Yeah, do it. Go get don't it. Don't mind. No, not at all. Is it kinetic? I think it's kinetic. Yeah. So kinetic energy. Telep 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 telepathic? Telepathic. I think it's that. It's both. But um, you know what it is? Is it just comes down to when people are on the same wavelength. Like, I do get it. There's families who have it, but with, with me and Chester, like you said, is fire and water. I say chalk and cheese. Fire and water. Mm. Yeah, chalk and cheese, pickle and, pickle and, pickle and cheese, whatever. Mm. But it's, it's, a, it's a complete difference that sometimes makes the mm. cake. Yeah. The opposing flavours. Sometimes it doesn't have to be the gel. Like, mm. with, as you know, with Mark and Liam Gallagher, mm. they're opposites yeah but sometimes you get people who are completely in a groove so they could be, be one person yeah and they're they're, they're that smooth mm. 
as a as a connection. And then you and then you get people who are like chalk and cheese, yeah. and it's like that also comes together smooth. There's something about vocalists though, as brothers or people that play the same instruments as as family. You know what I mean? You know, you get those kind of like moment. I mean, I've seen some the kinks things. are brothers, right? Yeah, the kinks. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the way they the harmonies are crazy and shit like that. The harmonies of some vocalists that are brothers and sisters are just insane. And the car, are the carpet is brothers and sisters, or they try to marry each other. I think they try to marry each other. No, they're not brothers and sisters. They're not they? there. The mamas and papas. Mamas and papas might be. Maybe they're what mad. They, they're no, mad. What are those girls? What are those girls from me? <laughs> North of England, Blackpool. What are they called? The sisters. Da, 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 there's like four or five of them. Bee Gees, fucking hell! Like Bee Gees, wow. Yeah. Do you know I mean like there's something about that? That energy. Um, the Jacksons. The Jacks. <laughs> Come on, late. Jesus. You know what I mean? More, comment below. There's more. There's more out there. But is that is that just because they've been able to be in each other's presence for such a long time that there's an understanding? It, sometimes it's sometimes it can just be a, a simple thing. It's like you can hang around with someone long enough to become. Yeah. In sync with that person. Do you have any arguments though? You must have some arguments. With my brother, no. Really? Uh uh. Nah. When we were kids, before music, we had some arguments. There were some arguments. I wasn't a very nice kid. I don't think. I was I was a, a, a spiteful child. And um Chester was like a space cowboy at way too young. And um my parents gave me lots of um, restrictions and boundaries that I broke and was punished for. And uh, my brother subsequently was given free reign. So one of us was a lot more probably angry and... I don't know, a chip on the shoulder. I would say that would, that would be probably me. Uh, looking back on on the childhood of our, of our at least our relationship, I thought, how am I supposed to be in at eleven o'clock? And at the same age, my brother's allowed to stay out for the whole weekend out of his face on trips or or ease. Man, that that's how I saw it as I a child. It, right? no, as a it. child, that kind of thing just makes you think. All right, cool. Favoritism is going on, mm. but I kind of felt that off my parents all the way through. I've never said that really uh, to anybody. Mm. So, well done mm. for making me feel comfortable enough. But um, exclusive, yeah, it's one of them. But not so much disagreements. Chess is a force, and uh, I think there's only one way to have a relationship with a force so strong, and that's to incorporate yourself in the space that that force has made for itself. Mm. And I don't believe that I'm the main force. And I had worked that one out artistically with Chester without speaking. Mm. So he likes to be front of the stage. And if I also want to be front of the stage, then we're going to have conflict. And that's when the show doesn't look as smooth. Mm. And he's talking, but I'm talking, and he's trying to talk, and I'm trying to talk, and that doesn't work. So when you have someone who's a front man, and puts themselves at the front, the only clever thing to do, or at least the most thoughtful thing to do, around that. is say, cool, mm. and just step back and let the person be the person who they rightfully are. And um, I embraced that very early, and uh, Chester embraces his role very early as, as uh, the McBain brothers, and um, there, was never a, there was never an argument with that. Sometimes I'd think, Please let me t let me talk. Let me say something, or can you stop talking about? Because he's got a different agenda to me. But so does he, is he aware that is he is he aware of the space that he feels and that he, that you may want to speak, or that that that's your department to talk about that? Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know actually. I don't, we've never sat down and had a conversation about it. Mm. Um, sometimes, sometimes families grow up, or they have grown over the years 
to not speak. And sometimes that suits the narrative at the time, mm. which is we all need to get on, so let's not speak mm. about stuff because we need to get on. Don't so rattle if, that box. Don't do Yeah, because sometimes it can yeah. be much more fragile. And it, this, this goes all the way throughout life and the relationships that you have with your, your mums, your and dads, your families. sisters, yeah, yeah. Your, your peoples, your friends, whatever, people you work with. Sometimes if you rattle the cage then the shit falls apart. Yeah. And if, if, it's your, if, if it's your vocation or it's your job or whatever, then you kind of have to negotiate around Fight it. your battles, fight the you know, right, right battles. Yeah, right. and they're, they're, I don't think with uh, Chester there was anything really that need, needed to be uh, talked about. Mm. If we ever spoke about stuff, it would be to do with the running of the set and... Uh, Really, you know, it was, it was just, it, artistically it was straightforward, and 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 then, as the years pass, you uh, you you grow to a to a, a place where it maybe isn't as compatible artistically as you would hope. And what we found after MFTC one, MFTC mm. two, three, four, and then we got to number five. Even though I, I would look at number five and think to myself, I think this is probably the most rounded of the volumes. You can check all of this stuff online, by the way. You can, you can. You can get it on Spotify, all the yeah. streaming services. This is some... At this point, I might just say as well, a lot of, a lot of records wouldn't have come out in the way they had. The UK hip-hop scene wouldn't have happened the way it had if it hadn't been for Task Force and yourself and Chester. Like, this, these were... F- groundbreaking moments that you know if if london posse allowed people to use their english accent you guys were the that's just a given now let's get into some creative shit and that really inspired peter you know i remember Mm. coming i remember being on the floor and seeing you guys perform for the first time you there wasn't a uk hip-hop act that had gone on tour like that you guys took it to nottingham you took it to birmingham you took and then there was people in the crowd that were Upcomings, they were the people that were establishments mm, of no, their no, I remember scene. meeting them all. Who were those guys in Birmingham? They're, um, Mike, no, no, who's the micro? Oh, no, that's a that's a broken English, and broken English, micro yeah. that's micro that's Connie yes, and yes. Strategy that's and Dell. Right. That's um, right, that's Manchester, right? That's Manchester, yeah, old tight Birmingham. Birmingham, um, what were they called? Moorish Delta. Moorish Delta. Hold tight, Moorish Delta. Moorish Delta. I remember they used to stand in a crowd whenever we used to... Put, they didn't fucking move, man. They yeah, were no, just no, there no. with their hands in their pockets. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> but you had Moorish Delta and there was another another crew as well. Um, and, you know, like typically Farmer, who hasn't got a memory at all, always got them mixed up and I think they probably weren't close. Uh, MSI. MSI, son. Yeah, they were the same... But they the same people. They were same, I think they were the same camp. No, they, they weren't the same people. <laughs> They were the same camp, same camp though. But they were, they were, they, they were kind of Ooh. UK hip hop. They were hip hop connection, and also um, Big Trev from uh, from Nottingham. Nottingham. So you had um, you had um, what's his name? Lee Ramsey at the Ville. At the Ville. Scorsese, Lee yeah. Ramsey, Old tight, my crew. Um, Charisma, and then Luton. You had uh, Phil Life Cipher yeah. and Napa. Yeah. Then in Newcastle, when we went Newcastle, we met Stig. Yeah. For the first time. Little, little, well, little big stick. Crazy. Backstage acting all gangster. Like, I, mem- I remember that. He, and I, for a minute, it was like, is this guy having a laugh? Like, and it was like, he was just a Geordie having a good time. And respect Stig. Um, who else? Yeah, so on the travels, all them guys, Manchester lot. Um, Scotland Yard from from up them ways Edinburgh. Riz, yeah, Riz, Riz. yeah. Um, Old tight. What's the uh, the the DJ? Uh, plus Rich, one. Richie Rough Tone. Richie Rough Tone. Yeah, that's plus right. one. Yeah. Yeah, and he lives on a corner. Plus one. How's he doing? He's, he's just running. Around. Yeah, he's got two kids and everything. Yeah, right? wicked. Yeah, he's yeah. still DJing yeah. and stuff. Producing. Oh yeah. Producing beats. Yeah. Say what? Yeah. Crazy. And you got Harry around there somewhere. Is Harry around there? He was there? down there. Old tight. Harry's been on podcast. Old tight. Yes, Harry. Day. Um. And of course, then there's the London fraternity, you know, and then we really open a Pandora box. And yep. again, High Focus, Revorg Records, all of these different platforms that now produce it, you know, they come from an establishment that 
you were help. Listen, I ain't fucking around. You helped create. You fucking put the fucking wheel on the wagon to make yeah. that thing roll. You guys were real. You mud family. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been it's been it's been said, and um, there's a time when I thought that it wasn't being said, or hadn't been said enough, and I felt an urge. And now I don't feel that urge, and I'm quite happy to uh, let it, let it just be. What, what Where's it... that come from? Just bit growing up with it and being at peace with it. Yeah, because, like I say, like people having debates and whatnot about who came first. Jest. I, when when we met Jest the first time, that's who I forgot. Jest was in was it not Hull or one of them Huddersfield? Huddersfield, yeah. And he was pissed out of his nut, <laughs> and he was this. He was a little kid. And it was like, um, he came upstairs and he was knocking pints over and he was like, everyone was looking at each other like, someone get this kid out. Mm. And he was, I think he had a record or something that he wanted us to sign. And so no matter what, I always just place myself back, I take myself back and I say, just remember who you are, where you met these people, what you meant to them. Mm. And it doesn't matter. The debates, whatever, what, whatever, whatever. Jest is flipping a phenomenon. Mm. He's a phenomenon. He was in he was in a crew called YNR Productions. He must have been about fifteen or sixteen when I first. And you know the hip hop connection did the connection section. Mm. I got in touch with this guy called Chris, and then he was part of a crew with Jest. And he's like, oh, you need to ch- chat to my boy Jest. Like, you know, he's the same age as you, and you know, you guys. Mm-hmm. Are... So next thing we're back and forth on the phone, back and forth on letters and stuff. Huddersfield, but he originally was from Crawley, right, like south, and that's where the kind of affili- affiliation came from, from me anyway. Well, and because his, I've got his first EP. I can't remember, like that's badass what, artist as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, alcoholic author and tracks like that, they are like, yeah. If if when people, if if ever someone says, all right, do a little bit of research, farms, go back, find me the the best hip hop UK hip hop tracks. Jest would definitely have a good couple of those tracks. I'm gonna I'm gonna extend that opinion even further and say one of my favourite UK hip hop tunes that you're on is the Cosmic Gypsy one. I think that, I think that rings out across the town, yeah. across the city, across the country. Seems like a, I didn't produce that beat by the way because it's it's a, it's embarrassing because people always go eh, 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 but brain tax myself. And I think Chester was there. Mm. We sat and Brains was on the machine. Yeah. And we sat and we devised that beat together. <laughs> but the, the man on the buttons was Brain Tax. But what a tune. What a tune. Seminal. Even, even just conceptually, what it was is... Uh, that's the creative element that I think people sometimes leave out Mm. musically like if you've got such an amazing tool as rap music hip-hop music whatever you want to call it to use words which is such a immediate and quick way of expression it's like it's it's almost like it's like straight away it's it's in your brain because yeah. it's that quick so yeah. if you're wasting that on just repetitively saying the same shit that's why people like Jizz are, are, are oh. like you, because yeah he does his thing and he does his thing but then he does his labels and he does his jungle wildlife one and he he, he extends the idea I love artists that do that shit he, you can see also yeah so boom he's He's thinking, di- and that people like that, that. That's where my cake concept came from. From being a fan of someone like um, Jizza, because it's a form of writing that, for someone like me, is it's suitable. So you you can you can write a rhyme by saying, "I'm going to write a rhyme about cakes," and then you could just sit there and and just think, "What cakes do I know?" And you write a cake. And then just, oh, Gingerbread Man. Mr. Gingerbread Man is a well-known killer. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and, then, and it's easy. 
yeah. but it's conceptually gratifying mm, yeah. to listen to because it's like, oh, another cake. Oh, another cake. Oh, yeah, another yeah. cake. Oh, another cake. And, and these kind of things, they're simple for an artist to do, but it's so gratifying and a change. And it's a similar concept mm. to Cosmic Gypsies, my verse especially, because all I did is probably either got some books or typed into the internet uh, celestial whatevers. That shit was cold. Yeah, and then, and then just lists and being like, oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that's good. Because I, I like the, the the way words feel. Yeah. So that, a lot of the time it doesn't make sense, but it's it feels nice. Yeah. Uh, it might not sound very good, but it sounds nice. Off blah, 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 like yeah, that. So yeah. celestial wormholes. Love it. Mm. I love uh, South American city names and country names. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. They always sound Nicaragua. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, <sighs> it always sounds good. But this this is the thing. Like when you're when when you become interested in language and the, the uh, phonetics of yeah. it, and that's why it, it's interesting. So when you when you think of a Glaswegian accent, mm. you think hard. Yeah. Because it's fucking. Yeah. It's like it's got a. <laughs> It's got a punch. It's, there's something yeah. phonetically hard about it. But then people go, oh, I love a French accent. Or oh, imagine mm. if a lady was talking French and like, I thought, oh, mm. and it, it's, a, it's a whole thing. And I mm. think if people can't artistically bring that in and use yeah. it, it's not uh, rap, rap and hip hop, whatever, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't have to be so rigid. No. It doesn't. It, it doesn't have to just be like be boy, be boy. Like it doesn't have to be. It's got all, some emotion to it, it. It can be. It can literally be whatever you want it to. But be. you guys bought that with Cosmic Gypsy, that album, Jest. You know, can big up, big up Jest, big up all these people. You kind of forage, kind of created a lane. Lewis Parker then kind of. Lewis was about. That. Lewis was about yeah. as well. Lewis was about. Maybe I still heard Lewis later on. But he, what was that? Oh, he'd done a banging album as well. It was an EP. You know, the one where he's got sil silhouettes, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never got on with, uh, uh, artistically anyway. No. I, I never got on with Lewis Park. I'll still say that to this day. Yeah. Same as, um, uh, uh, I can't remember, uh, I can't remember his name now, but he, he, he's, he's in Japan now. Um, but that, that American twang is too much for me. I see. Yeah. It, it's too. It, it, I'm not knocking. Not knocking him. And 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 like I say, artistically, like I, I'll just yeah. I'll just be honest. It's like some some someone from America would say, I can't listen to farmer rap. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Why why can't you listen to me rap? I, I don't like the way your voice sounds. And mm, that's just the cool then. Yeah. Because I don't like the the, I don't like to hear American slang. Mm. It's a tough one, isn't it? I don't mind if if you go like, yo yo. But, but when when you like, and then and then it's like, well, so what's going on with the American like kind of mm. twang in the back in the back of the voice? And it's like, well, you know what I mean, son. I've been in I've been in New York for two years right now, son. And it's like, <laughs> all right, then that explains it all, then, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean, it explains um, it all. Me and Skinny have this constant conversation whenever we see each other. It's like, fucking Chaz and Dave. They were the first MCs in the UK. <laughs> And we just, we're like flat earthers, but for, for UK hip hop. Chaz and, we're, and Dave. Chaz and Dave, man. They were. She talks too much. <laughs> Why don't she give it a rest? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love it. New Year's Day staple, but it's Chaz and Dave. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's okay for uh, the MC genre to migrate. And migrate, it fucking has. I mean, it's gone from. From what was like, yeah, Cookie Crew esque, um, uh, American Moni Love kind of hodgepodge of UK yeah, meets yeah, yeah, American. Yeah, for sure. Then it went into London Posse, then it's gone into Task Force, and it, then it went into um, Grime, mm -hmm. and all of it's kind of, you know. Th but that why, but whole why world. don't we hear Grime MCs trying to be American? Like, yeah, we don't hear Grime yeah. rappers. Trying to like come with an American tinge, which is uh, yeah, which makes complete and utter well sense. because it's English. Yeah, it's 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 
fucking straightforward. Like when I used to make beats for the MFTC series or whatever, mm. like I would do whatever I was doing. I'd get high. I'd do da ba da. I'd sit there all night and I'd make beats. Most of the time, I'd be making beats, thinking of um, Prodigy and Havoc or like Inspector Deck or someone rapping over mm, the beats. Mm, mm. But never once did it inspire me when it came time to put my lyrics on that beat which would have become something that came out on one of them releases, mm. never did it inspire me to go, yeah, son, <laughs> straight out the slums of Highbury Village. <laughs> never, never. It's, and I don't understand it. So that's where respect to, respect to them people because like, if I see any of them guys on the street, mm. it's, it's love and bless. Mm. But artistically, mm. I could never understand it. Mm. I, could, I couldn't. And that's what Task Force came in on that new Mike Order thing was basically a rally, like a call, mm. like a, 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 on the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King business on top of the hill, and be like, everyone, mm. use your own fucking voices, <laughs> charge! <laughs> like some Braveheart shit. That's what it felt like, and, and, and you know what? It, it was amazing what happened, really. Like, it was yeah. amazing what happened to me and my brother. Uh, in 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 consequence to releasing that piece of music with Mark B, who I'm grateful to yeah, always to and, B, and, and real, humbled yeah. that he chose us, mm. and um, how important it became to so many people, but also always has really uh, amazed me how, in a way, what we were saying at that time. Like I say, when you go back on something, you can look at it and make sense for it for now so here's the now version thank you mm. like it mean it meant so much it changed so many things mm. so many people were inspired etc cetera, etc cetera. but pretty much at the time we were like hold on a minute what if they, no this is not what we meant this isn't what we meant we didn't mean every mc from every flipping corner of the fucking country mm. to suddenly start making records thinking that they're great mm. No, like so. In a way, it was a. There was a lot of turmoil in that release. Actually, yeah, you know what? It did feel like though. There was a. Oh fuck! Spicy, all right. Spice alert. There was imitators, but when you go back to the source and listen to New Mike Order, mm. there was. You just it just kind of reset your head. It's like. But in a in a way, there's 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 more politics to it. It's, you can get. I spoke to someone about this before, and it can get really deep. But I'm not going to take it really deep. But it can get really deep because mm. when you look at the demographics mm. of where hip hop was being made before that release, mm. right? Yes, you had a bit, 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 bit. But who was making it? Yep. Where they were from? What cultural background they came from mm. what the raves and what the clubs were were doing who was in the clubs etc etc the voice. people who i came yeah. out to when i when i went to the clubs when people of my age used to go hip-hop rave when you used to go to menelec street to go borderlines or go any of them clubs i know that the, the clientele was very different to what it became two or three years after we had done our new Mike Order record. And I'm not going to put the emphasis on that record solely for what happened. It fucking changed, bro. The, the whole thing changed. And I have a little sense of responsibility, I feel, in that, in a way that upset me at the time because that was kind of not what we were trying to evoke. Like, we weren't trying to, like flip it on its head and now even up to this day it's still the demographic stays the same for this type of but John UK Lydon's, hip hop Jordan Lyon says the same thing about the, you know never mind the bollocks you know They're, and uh, you know maybe a, 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 a maybe a severe comparable but it holds the same um, it, it it didn't have that same intention but it was responded to in that same particular way that, mm -hmm. that the punk movement was it was and it's a class thing i think it was a class of people that just didn't have the voice and didn't didn't have the resources didn't have the balls to say yeah actually you know like you say you it was a it was a new mic order it was a call to arms yeah no i mean i mean like i say yeah now like 
yeah, look, here it is, here it is, and I'm that far away from it now, and I can mm. say it, it was an explosion and I'm sure a massive influence on many, many, genera- many years of UK hip-hop to come. Yeah. It was, and it was a positive one. There is an element that I'm slightly upset and unhappy about, but maybe things changed for a reason, and there were lots of things that grew out in extension from that. Mm. Um, and... The the, the 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 attitude of the album, um, of that album, and you know all the other ones you, you created, you 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 created such a huge following of like hardcore, and you know you partook, you were a, a part of the scene as well. I mean, we were just saying before we started that you hadn't been smoking for a good few years now mm-hmm. and drinking. No drink, no um, smoking. But this was, a, you know, this was. A, subscription to the, the, the scene at that time was like, yeah, right, we, we're doing that, we're doing that, we're doing that. We're getting slaughtered down at a local pub and all of my fucking fans are going to be there. Mm-hmm. This was the... you still got, like, the craziest devotees of fans now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, you know hold, hold it with high regard, like people that, like, only fools and horses would. You know, they, they do... They walk it how they talk it. No, I mean, Task Force fans are the best. Yeah. Uh, un- <laughs> unfortunately, like... The the dividends, the financial dividends is kind of like it's running running a little bit dry on that one. But like I say, you you create vessels to sail as far as you can sail, and then look on the horizon for other places to mm. to jump off on. And and like that's pretty much me from the last two, three, four years is just to uh, evaluate myself as a person. As a father to three children Whee! and maybe the same amount of grandchildren and to say what exactly have I got to offer as an MC? And as I've always had the duality of being a producer who I just, I love music. Mm. I love music. It's not just the spoken word and poetry. In fact, I'm not even a big fan of that side of it, uh, which is what I've come to terms with in myself is like yeah okay that's the attitude and the ego over there but the actual love Mm. and the beauty of it is all over here in the music and um that's really taken full effect in in me because i had to ask myself what can i speak about what can i rap about as a you know coming up half a century on this planet Mm. and my child my eldest child is 28 years old what am I going to be able to say? Mm. I don't go parties. I stopped going parties years ago. I wouldn't go party if you invited me and mm. said, look, there's free this, free that, free that, and you'll have this, that, and the other at I the end of the night. I come round, you understand. Yeah? <laughs> <It's> no, just... <laughs> but my whole life is, is devoted to my circle, my immediate circle, which mm. is my, my, my family that sprouted out of me. Mm. Yeah? I don't really chat to my mum. I don't have a dad. Don't r- rarely chat to Chester. Ain't chatted to my eldest son. So I've got my missus, my wife, and my two youngest kids. Is that a choice? Wilder why, and why, Indy. Why, why so... Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think I can spread... No, to, it, oh, you can't spread the attention that wide? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's difficult for me to even negotiate the two kids like if i give this one some energy then this one's going to get like i have to really i haven't got enough that's uh, yes but yeah. it has been said that i have no empathy so it's very as a young parent when i came up as a parent i was trying to do it all on my own i didn't feel this is in retrospect mm. to when i was a, a first time dad mm. What I didn't realise is maybe I hadn't been looked after as a, as a child. Maybe I hadn't been... I mean, my parents were love and hippie and free and this, that and the other and lentils and all the rest of it. But I don't... I'm, as an adult, looking at hippie and, and that way of living and the whole... Uh, what do you call it? Where they all live together, community... Yeah, com- yeah commun- communal. All that yeah. business, communities and all them business. Commune, that's the one. Mm. Now it, nah, all no. that flower power, all that 60s business, all that 60s and 70s. Nah, that's, nah, when you look at it, it's bullshit. Mm. Like, it's full on bullshit. Anyway, so without going all the way into that whole thing. but So I kind of, in retrospect, kind of figured that 
I mustn't have been really looked after with that love, love business mm. as much as I should have because I haven't got the empathy. So if my child had f fallen over when I was first time, so it had been three or four, if it had fallen over, my instinct would not to be go, oh, come, 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 are you all right, are you all right? It'd be like, get up, <laughs> get up, what are you crying for? That, that, was, mm. that was me as a parent. And even now I'm still trying to break that. Um, Conservativeness. Harsh, mm. fucking up north upbringing mm. from parents. I don't know. I don't know exactly what, what's going on. The, the only answers that can be given is from your parents. And I don't really want to have that conversation with them. But MCing is the last thing in your mind when you're dealing with well, life. What can I say as a rapper that my, my 28 year old son Remus can't say mm. or should be saying? Like, what am I bringing to the table? that is nourishing, that is, mm. is able to like go bring and spring a new spring of something that other people can come and go, mm, that's a nice herb, let me go and take that and plant that and I'll grow some of that as well. Mm. I ain't got nothing to say. So it's, uh... I can repeat myself and it can sound like I'm saying something, but have I said it before? I think that's the thing, because people when, you know, with a group like Task Force, you know, they... I guess, it, I guess it happens to all bands and acts, you know, this jukebox effect of like, go to the show. I mean, that's plagiarism in itself, isn't it? You're going to the show and repeating yourself, doing yourself because they want to hear it. And it's it's, a, it's the jukebox effect. And then you repeat, repeat. But you repeat. can get stuck. You can get stuck. Because your, your fans want, like, how many times have I heard, oh, yeah, like, oh, I want you to do like, like, new mic order. Like, that's what, yeah, like, why don't you do some more stuff like Cosmic Gypsies? I don't want to. No, no. Because I've done. done it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, I did it. Mm. When you're talking about Cosmic Gypsies, I did yeah, yeah. it. It was me. The buck stops here, baby. <laughs> it was me you did who it. did it. So we did. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to be inspired off your thing and go, oh, that's inspiring. No, like, I can't inspire myself. Mm. That's done. That's spent. It's that's like, some real art shit. That's some... Deep but it, you can't do that because then the fan is dictating yeah. and like that fan that fan is stuck then that's not my problem mm. that, that fan is stuck in 1999 or whatever it is the part of that discography that he's stuck on to say nah oh, farms ain't cutting it like when he was doing that da, 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 or chess chess ain't sounded the same since da, 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 da. that fan is stuck mm. the artist ain't stuck so if you don't like if you can't check for me now or you, you ain't checking for Chester's last thing or whatever, then you're stuck over there. Mm. Because the artist's job is to give you something and say da 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 and then move on and come again mm. and recreate. So now it's like with what I'm doing now, it's like I've got young youth in America, in uh, young urban youth from America, tuning into what I've always done. Mm. I swear some of these guys don't know how old I am and, and what I look like. That's crazy. Yeah? They don't yeah. know who I am. Love it. And if they did, they'd probably be like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah? Sick. But how did, this is how it should work. Because they don't, they're not stuck on task force, yeah. But I want to hear, I want to hear junkyard mm. skits. I want to hear that. I want to hear mud files. I want to, mm-mm. Mm because they never heard this stuff, but they're listening to these beats that I would give to Chess. I would give these beats to Chester and Chester would annihilate them. And you could put Task Force stuff on them because mm. now it's, it's the psychedelic Tessin business now. It's like it's fully gone there. Uh, and they're taking them and they're putting this gritty New York or wherever they're coming from. And it's now. It's now. It's fresh. It is and the thing is, 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 is now making sense to me what I've been doing all these years. Yeah. Since I was first inspired mm. in 1985 by rap music, by Roxanne Chante, by Dougie Fresh and, and Slick Rick, by Grandmaster Flash and by The Message and all these different things. It is now making sense all these years later on this long ass journey why I'm here and mm. what I've been doing and why have I ended up now making beats that urban kids in New York rapping 
on the new Full wave yeah. of rap music that is taking off mm. into the mainstream. Full, full circle. Yeah. All those things you've learned up till now, they've all been, you know, they all get to that point and you're in this place now that if you hadn't have done all the stuff you've done, you wouldn't have that definitive, well, this new thing. And I ain't changed. No. Ar artistically, I haven't changed. Mm. Because it's the same. It's the same as when I started. It's the same as where I am now. It's looking in the same crates. I've never dug into soul, soul crates. Mm. I've never dug the funk crates. I've always dug the 60s, psychedelic, amazing, fantastic stuff and still dig those same crates, still make funky, psychedelic, and sample God funkiness. Still in business, baby. Still in business. Mm. Is that why we don't see so much... Uh, I mean... I think Chester did a show. Big up Chester, by the way. I'm so big up. Yeah, hold tight, Chester. Big up Chester. Um, I saw him, he, I think, if my memory serves, he did Chip Shop. He did a Chip Shop show or something. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't chat to Chess. No. We don't chat, but I know Chess is always, I mean, he's always going to be, I mean, I don't really understand in, in this life how Chester isn't like the Poets Laureate or, or something. Because I, I can only imagine that that is something to do with our karma or the way that we bring ourselves into this industry and maybe people hold grudges, maybe we're too outspoken, maybe Chester's definitely probably maybe outspoken. Um, but in my opinion, Chess should be an artist who is... Revered. I agree. To a, to a great height. And I've always maintained that. Yeah. And that has never been something that frightens me because one has to always recognise greatness. And if you can't... Then there's something and questionable. That's, that's a real shame. Yeah. And that's why, that's why McBain Brothers were able to do what we did because there was no confusion. Chester is a lyrical genius. And I don't say that lightly. I say that in the sense that he could be put at, up against. He could be put up against anyone, mm. be it Kate Tempest to Inspector Deck to any to anybody Just from in any the hierarchy of established artists from the that, last poets, yeah. Jill Scott Heron. Anywhere you want to go, you can take Chester P. And even the writers, Jack Kerouac, any, you can go anywhere. Mm. You can go Bob Dylan. You can go any. You can go anywhere. You can put Chester P. in that conversation with those people, and he will be able to hold his own his own weight. And I am very confused, mystified that somebody or some kind of machine within the industry hasn't thought to themselves. Yeah, yeah. There's a man with legacy. He's got his shit together. Why? Yeah, I get you. I don't know. I, I don't know. know why. I, and it can only be something ridiculously shit. Yeah. Why this hasn't Short happened? Short-sighted. Because yeah, it's like what? So oh, we'll just wait till he dies. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait till he See, dies. And that's mate. And and then when he's not here, then we'll because oh because he's too unapproachable or because he's too outspoken. But they they will be revered. The words will be revered and everyone will go, I love Chester, he was so good. Uh, that's, that's bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. That's and bullshit that. because, because that's not how man's living. Yeah. A, man, a, a man is struggling from day to day, like myself, to make ends meet. And why can't greatness be celebrated? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Especially when the, the arms out reaching. The, like, these boys haven't stopped. They have not stopped. Uh, me, I don't business about, about, about me. But on on the on the on the topic of chess, even even though we ain't speaking and and there's there's shit in the way, like I say, you can't deny greatness. But a lot of somewhere there's a it's like it's like a shit pipe somewhere. Mm. This pipe is stuck of of shit, mm. and and someone and needs to like go down, find budget. The, yeah. And you hear this thing all the time now: give man his flowers, mm. give give the flowers when they when when they're alive, yeah. when when they're there to, because what it is is. You give so much of it, because I'm not a heart. They, my lyrics, we've kind of gone over it in this interview, they're not really coming out of here. 
or you talk, you talk to a man like Chester, that, that shit is in here and every piece of it, like when a superhero uses his power, mm. it's like he's, he's weakening himself every yeah. time. So you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving. And it, you, but you ain't getting nothing back. Mm. Yeah, you can have adoration all day. And most artists, when they've been doing this thing for as long as oneself, yeah, that's cool, cool. Mm-hmm. You, you come out the yard, oh, yeah, you farm a G from Task Force, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. It, you get over it. Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. But what you, what you still need, you still need to, to have people say, boom, I'll buy that. I'll buy that discography off you. Yeah. I'll buy your T-shirt, I'll come to your gig. Yeah. Because... You deserve it, and I think you're great. Yeah, that, wholeheartedly. That's right? beyond just flowers. That is that is a sustainability that allows your favourite artists and people that actually deserve it to to sustain. To, to keep going. Yeah. To keep because going. because it's life. Yeah. Because we're not skilled in other in other areas. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like it's like yeah, well, yeah. Once you've been doing what we we've been doing for twenty years, if you ain't been doing some other business on the side mm. all this time mm. you might have got a little law degree you've been doing open university mm. like the clever maybe the clever ones have been doing mm-hmm. that but a lot of us we've just been yeah. that's it creating so what you get to 50 years old and then you say to yourself oh shit where's my pension shit pension <laughs> what the pension fuck? where's my next fucking yeah, yeah. cabbage and potatoes coming from but then that, that's the thing isn't it when you you're, you're very much like me as is Chester it's all or nothing everything goes in that one thing because it's a lot of energy a lot of energy which has a lot of uncertainty to it you know because of the class that we're in mm. you know you have to invest on or, or you, with what you have which isn't a lot and you just got to go for it and there's a there's a time span in which whatever is in the pot stays in the pot yeah it's fucking tough yeah well do, doing it in in the same way mm. So again, one more time, I'll reiterate about a journey where you have vessel, whether it's whatever, but you jump and you keep looking to the horizon mm. and, and transforming mm. your skill set mm. to adapt, right? So you're doing your podcast now, mm. right? So you're adapting your skill set. So you're a people person now. So you're doing your podcast. Oh, yeah, cool. So you're meeting people, you get contacts, mm-hmm. your connections are growing, mm. da 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 And it, 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 that's how it has to be. You have to keep grinding at it. you got to just look further... And wider, so that you can keep it moving. Mm. Because, like I say, people ain't going to want to hear my voice rapping. But the production and the beats and the, the production—they can't see me, and I can I can mm. douche this, project this whole mm. new persona mm. that like kids kids who are twenty, and they're like, yeah, they don't know who I am. Where are you from? Where you, where are you from, son? I see you as an actor, though. I could always see you as an actor. Uh, no, I did some modelling and, and some other bits and pieces, yeah. man. But, you know, some of us, we're, we're just not... We haven't got the right attitude and we missed, the, we missed some of them boats, man. I, li- I did like to wear certain stuff. And I grew my hair at a time when all the boys had their hair short. And uh, around Kung Fu times, I, I was wearing some crazy... Yeah, man, you were some avant-garde... Crazy get up. Six, six years, so but, um, Yeah, man, I remember... And, you know, I think... I think when we we talk about this and this this kind of where it's coming from is that you know like you say the the rebuild the rebrand and the reimagined version of of yourself you know I've always seen that in pharma. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's the evolution, but you know what I, w- I would like to say before we end up or whatever, whenever we're going, I want people in the UK like I know that most of us we love. American hip hop music, mm-hmm. right? And I think we've all felt a little bit detached. And I'd say that for, for quite a long time, we felt detached and poo pooed American rap, which I completely understand. And me, as part of that as well, have poo pooed American hip hop rap. But what I would like to say is that there is a, an underground wave of hip hop that is if you're a fan of American hip-hop, or if I can swing your mind to say, maybe open up the bo- the Pandora's box and have a new, fresh look at what's on offer, there is some amazing hip-hop music being made in the States right now, all over the world, in fact. Especially there's international producers all over the world working with these new upcoming rappers. 
from the States and like myself, like Flu from Australia, Time Peace, you've got Hobgoblin in Birmingham, um, you've got Giallo Point um, from over here, you've got a whole heap of different guys, you've got Future Wave from Canada, yeah. you've got people in Japan, there's untold, decent, underground, like when people are, yeah, but I want to hear stuff like Mob Deep and Tribe Called Quest and da 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 Cool. It's there. Mm. It's there. You look, there's vinyl, there's CDs, there's online. Check it out. It is happening and it's time when people just say, all right, you know what? Don't come with this puffy and, and tell me, oh, no, American rap, you're yeah, puffy and the locks and all that. You're 20 years late. <laughs> Dive back in. Let's revive what's going on because it's time, right? There's a whole Sunny Jim, respect, Sunny Jim's tapped in, Dort Records. Yeah. Um, all the people who are doing stuff, Uncle Tim, we know what's going on and it's time. It's time it to build there. the fan base worldwide. And it's like it takes the UK. It's always taken the UK to build that connection, that transatlantic link. Re export, right? yeah. And let's all make, make it work. So like tune in, get some Rome Streets, get some The Cloth, get some Mooch, look out for Heroin Farms. Just look, look for the Farmer Beats production, look for all the different links. Get related artists on your YouTubes, on your watch. You don't even have to pay, but tune in. It's out there. That's cold you even broke them names through, bro. No, 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 but for real, it's out there. And Who I got a, shit I got here. a bad memory, but... Do you remember them? <laughs> Wait, remember look, them. If, if you want, like, your gateway drug to the new opening scene, West Side Gun, Benny the Butcher, and Conway the Machine. That's your gateway <laughs> drug. Right, you get them guys, and then you go through the related artists, and yeah. you keep going, and you keep going, go down the rabbit hole, mm -hmm. find that music. That music's out there. The people who know, they know already. There's actually a couple of there's a couple of dope radio stations as well. There's one on YouTube. I'll get it now because um, while I'm on my phone, hold on, I'll just get on my phone to get it because um, Zombie, um, East Coast, um, East New York Radio on yeah yeah YouTube yeah 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 hold tight Zombie ain't that PF cutting. Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. PF Cut. And I, I've been listening to that. Yeah, That's yeah. some new shit as well. Not just old shit, it's the new shit. But that DJ, PF Cutting, yeah. he's from back in the day. So mm. everyone's still there doing it. DJ Riz, rap is out of control. Yeah. All these different, they're, they're all still there. Right, DJ Riz, amazing DJ mm. from back. Yeah. Still yeah. there, playing up to date. But, you, but check it now. These guys, they're all playing. Music from me, music yeah. from my peoples, music, music from. There's a big thing going on. It's a movement, and it, and it, and it's working just the same as it has always. It comes back round, and it's and it's here, and it, and it's relevant to now. And people tune in, like I say, Westside Gun and all them guys. They're being signed to Rockefeller. There's a whole heap of people that you need to hear, mm. and it's it's gutter rap, it's street rap. So it's. Which tune, is, tune in, man. Which is what everybody likes. Like, don't play it like... Because you, it's like a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. It's New, New York. It's fucking hot. It's street corner papoose shit. It's <laughs> proper shit. <laughs> papoose. Do you remember papoose? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, like, you know what? Papoose, he's got that thing where he can't get a good beat. And I've said it a few times. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to come on one of my beats. Yo, you're so true. His beats, right? His recent ones. And he's like, he was one of the better rappers yeah for real like the uh, alphabetical slaughter and all them yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. but mm. Mm, serious. but there's a whole new range of people man and, and and same as over here as well shout out to lee scott shout out to all them guys blah records it's, it's that's the yeah. amazing that's the uh, them, them guys are just amazing they blow my mind leaf dog always if you ain't heard leaf dog and farmer yeah. the album that we just did called consume four hours Four hours. Yeah. Um, so you got all the high focus lot. Yeah. But um, the 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 pot is is thick of, of of juicy goodness. So I'm saying. So anyone stuck on the task force thing, move along. So we got to get to the next thing. It's, it's next like thing. it's like hearing American rappers. My my thing is hearing American rappers on task force music. That's cold in itself. That might not tickle some people's fancy. That you, you might, yeah, I want to hear American beats with Task Force rapping on it. That's cool. Maybe one day. But for the moment, go on my Bandcamp page, Farmer Beats. 
Farmer beats at Bandcamp, I think it this is. This is yeah. valid. This is validated within a mu- uh, movement. This isn't. This isn't a man here saying check it out because it warrant of his own individual career. This is. He's part of a movement. This is a. a it's an international thing. movement, yeah. man. People are doing stuff. You know what I mean, this is this is what creatives do. They keep on evolving. Keep on moving. Don't, don't stop, stop now. <laughs> Robin, man, it has been a pleasure. Farmer G, long awaited. Mm. Got there. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Right. Said some personal things. That's right. That's right. We we cover the circumference of uh, human sensitivity and creativity and yeah. You embody all of that stuff, my brother. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Killer Keller podcast. Out, it was out of fashion. You know what to do. Sharing is caring. Subscribe and get involved. All right? You stay lucky. Don't talk to any strange ones. Peace. Peace. <laughs>